Hey, Stephen Young here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Burneson Auto Wrecking in Burneson, Massachusetts with a 1967 Dodge Coronet 500. Now this is one of two model years with this basic body styling, 66 and 67. And uh, this is really the beginning of, of Dodge's high performance era. The Coronet RT arrived in 1967. Now this is a Coronet 500, so it's not an RT, but it's still pretty sporty. Uh, the grill on this is still in pretty darn good shape. One detail about 67 versus 66, on the 66s, the turn signals were outboard of the headlights on each side of the grill. For 67, they went into the bumper, as we see right here. Otherwise, similar styling. The hood, the fenders, the quarters were all very similar. But something we see on this one under the hood is what engine. Now, before we do that, by the way, one thing to do is look at the fenders on any 66 or 7, and you'll see an engine marker. If you see nothing, it's a slant six. If you see this, well, it's a two barrel V8 of some kinds. Otherwise, you might see 383 or 440 Magnum on an RT or 426 Hemi. But this has a V8, so we know it's a two barrel of some kind, 361 or... Okay, yeah, this is a small block. This is the 318 two barrel with 230 horsepower. Now, this is a new engine for 1967. Uh, the 273 came out in 64 as the LA, which is the light A series. But in 66, the 318 was a big polyspherical monster of an engine. Same 230 horsepower, but about 55 pounds heavier. This is something I brought here. This is a Chrysler Engineering Office uh, news bulletin, if you will. And inside this, they're talking about the new 318 cubic inch V8 engine, which was new again for 1967. We can see right here that the LA318 weighs 55 pounds less than the polyspherical. It has hydraulic tappets, because keep in mind, every 318 poly, which was used from oh, 1962 through 66, they had solid lifters and adjustable rocker arms, no hydraulics on those things. And they weren't wedges, they were polyspheres, which kind of was an outgrowth of the Hemi era, uh, where the polyspherical combustion chamber gave you some of the benefits, breathing benefits of a Hemi, but without the expense of double rockers. Well, Chrysler realized that was awfully heavy and really wasn't worth the trouble. So they basically turned the LA into their backbone small block engine in 1967. And well, here it is, the 318. Now we know it's a 318 because the VIN has an F in the fifth spot. If it was an E, this would be a, three, a 273 two barrel. You paid $24 more to get the 318 versus the 273, which looked about the same. But again, these are fairly potent little engines. One detail here, $4.95, got this, the three-speed wiper. The standard two-speed wiper stuck out. It had a motor that came straight out. And again, the beauty of the three-speed wipers, you have slow, medium, and high, whereas the two-speed wiper was, well, low or high. So a little more uh, flexibility there. Manual drum brakes here, although you see here for the first time, dual master cylinder. The circular single pot of 66 is long gone. This is a federal mandate. All American cars had have dual pots. And again, that makes it so the front and rear brakes are separated. If you lose one end of the car, you still have the brakes at the other end. Now keep in mind, in 1967, 410,000 Dodges were sold. And a lot of them were darts, like 37%. But check this out, the B bodies, these guys here account for 45% of all Dodge sales. So the backbone seller was the mid-size Coronet, not the Dart. And of course, at the top, the Monaco's, the Polaris were, you know, like 10%. But this was a backbone car, the Coronet, the mid-size car. Now this one is a Coronet 500. And uh, something that's kind of neat is this has a radiator. And a lot of folks don't realize that you can actually have a numbers matching radiator or not. This is a Galen Govier fact book from 2001, 21 years old. But Galen Govier was and is a, uh, an authority in decoding Mopars. We can see right here, this book is the uh, Casting Numbers Book 274. And in here, the radiator. We look here on Chrysler radiators. There's always a tank stamping 344-396. Eight, right? What does that mean? Is it a 67 Coronet? Well, no. Here it is right here on page 12. Uh, 344-3968 is a 71B body with a 318. So uh, somewhere along the line, the original radiator for this car was lost. And this 71B body, Charger Coronet radiator, took its place. It fits, does the job. But again, when it comes down to restoring uh, and rebuilding Mopars, the devil's in the details, even including the radiator, they're actually very specific to the cars. Let's take a look further. Um, this is a convertible. It's not a decapitated hardtop. Pretty rare body style. And being a Coronet 500, it is bucket seat equipped. And of course, that put uh, some of the sportiness into the Coronet to have that uh, central... Uh, 
uh, open, open console. Now this has a column shifted automatic. If this had a floor shifter, there would be a standard center console. But again, when the shifter was up on the column, you got that buddy seat in the middle, which added some utility to the two uh, bucket seats up front. But again, those buckets were standard equipment. And some we can see there below the steering column, straight down on against the floor. That's one of the torsion bars, that, that thing going straight ahead. And that's part of the Chrysler B-body suspension. Of course, 1957, first year for torsion bars in Chrysler vehicles. And of course, the B-body arrives in 62. Torsion bars help to make it light. No coil springs here. And the beauty of the torsion bar is that they're light and they give pretty good handling. Uh, of course, the factory cutaway continues here with the beautiful Fred Flintstone floor panel. You can see my nice L.L. Bean boot right through there and some somehow this thing uh, just rusted away and nobody stopped it from happening. But it is a true convertible. We can see the whole back area here is opened up. Again, if this was a decapitated hardtop, we'd see a speaker shelf back here, but this is a real deal convertible. This trim here with these buttons is pretty rare stuff, and it's a combination of pot metal and stamped stainless steel. So we can see the stainless survives quite well. The pot metal does start to pit, but this stuff here, if you're restoring a convertible, you need it. So uh, let's take a look around the back here. And again, it's a Coronet 500 convertible. You know, it's kind of sad to see something this rare in the boneyard, but uh, here it is. But something kind of interesting is on the back of the Coronet 500, a unique taillight and trunk panel right here. These uh, vertical slats, this heavy die-cast metal grill, hideaway taillights seen only on the Coronet 500 and the Coronet RT. Now, the Coronet RT, as we know, arrived in 67 and was Dodge's answer to the Pontiac GTO. Dodge's first self-aware image car, really, the 67 Coronet RT. The same piece here was used on the RT and the 500. One difference. There's an insert right here. You can see here that it's this is a spot that's meant to take an insert. This says 500, but on the RT, this would say RT. And speaking of which, this is Motor Trend, June 1967. An interesting issue because inside is a test of a Coronet RT and a street Hemi. But the weird thing is, the cars tested are on the left-hand side. That's a Coronet RT with a 440. That was their 440 test car. You can see the style steel wheels. The one on the right, that's a Coronet 500, a 67 with a street Hemi. See the emblem on the fender? That is one of like three never was Coronet 500 street Hemis made in 67. It wasn't supposed to happen because in 67, the RT and of Plymouth, the GTX, were the only way to get a street Hemi, except for a handful of non-GTX, non-RT cars. And something even weirder is in 1967, the Coronet RT magazine ad was this thing right here. It says, Roadrunner. What? A year before Plymouth launched the mighty Roadrunner, Dodge used the Roadrunner name for the Coronet RT magazine ad. You got to wonder if the ad agencies were playing an arm wrestling game or just weren't aware. And I think that's the case because Dodge and Plymouth used different ad agencies in 1967. So one hand didn't know what the other one was doing. So you get weird embarrassments like this here as a result. So this is kind of a weird footnote in the world of the Coronet RT and the Roadrunner, the history of those two vehicles. So again, this is uh, you know an example of a unit construction Chrysler beyond hope, because if this was a GM car, you could get a new frame and put this body and, and weld up the floors. But because the frame is integral to the floor of this car, the amount of rust this thing has, it, it's going to involve $100,000 worth of labor to turn this into a $60,000 car. That's the problem. Now, if it was a Hemi, oh, we'd find a way. But that's the, uh, the end of the road apparently right here. But keep in mind, the rear bumper, the trim panel, the convertible top stuff, even the A-pillar mold holding on this thing, which is unique to convertible, it's all in pretty good shape. So I dare say the folks here at uh, Burson Auto Wrecking, they know way better than to crush or scrap something like this, which is why it's sitting here. They're Mopar people here at Burniston. They love them all, actually, but there's a lot of cool stuff tucked away, and it's safe here. But it is for sale. You can look them up if you want. Burniston Auto Wrecking, if something here you can use. I stay out of that stuff. But uh, with that said, that's the story of the 67 Coronet RT and the 67 Coronet 500. Similar, but not the same. If you like this video, be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the Steve Banks YouTube channel.